Hey team. team, I'm Dickie. And I'm Nikki. Welcome to the Dickie and Nikki podcast. Today we've got our first guest on the show, George. Ooh, little Georgie Porgy. <laughs> Are you excited? Super excited. I'm very excited. I can't wait for you. Right, troops, like Alex just said, we've got George on, our first ever guest. Ooh, everyone clap. There we go, good. <laughs> right, but before we get started, we're going to go for Nikki's fact of the week. And today, I've got one that's very topical to, sorry, can you hear me now, to, to having George on. So, little Dickie, do you know what Genie stands for? Yeah, I thought it was both your initials. Correct, well done. Well done for playing the role of the act. <laughs> yes, Genie is I thought Genie, that was a cool- George oh. and Nick, yeah, and that's where the name comes from. I thought to say no. Was I not? Was yeah. I not meant to know that? I, I, I did say to you before we started, yeah. So it's because. So anyway, guys, there's a fact. I, Alex does know it. He was, he was meant to pretend not to know it. However, <laughs> now you guys know it, so it doesn't matter. Well it's because I thought I wasn't a hundred percent. So I was, like, I was like, I'm pretty sure it's your initials. Yeah, and I it was. was no. Yeah, you did really well. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Just really well. Yeah. Hundred percent. I have a hundred percent that. So guys. Like we said, we've got George Porgy on today, and we're just going to talk through George's life. It's just a bit of fun listening uh, for you guys. Uh, George's got had quite a colourful background, quite a good upbringing, or quite a colourful upbringing, and it's and you know he's kind of experienced through life. So we're just going to talk through George Porgy. First of all, we're going to go through how we. <laughs> I've never of heard of call you George <laughs> Porgy. <laughs> yeah. Big Nicky, little Dicky, Georgie Borgie. Right. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Yeah. Well, I've been calling it here for 17 years, mate. 16, 17 years. Why, why stop now? So, so just a bit of background. I've known George for 16, 17 years. We, we met when we first joined the army together and we've become best friends and more like brothers, actually. Alex, how do you know Georgie Porgy? Uh, through you. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> no, so I don't even, when did we meet? Mate. When did we meet? Mate. I don't. A couple of minutes ago. I mean, hey, I'm not going to do uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, it was last year sometime, wasn't it? Yeah, about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's kind of, you know, who George is, uh, how we know him. And all we're going to start with, we're going to let Georgie kick it off with, with his kind of youth and where he comes from. Youth. Youth. Okay. <laughs> he's <Okay>. youth manting. <laughs> Back in the day. Back in the day. Back when bread with bread. So yeah, from Manchester. um, Grew up in Manchester. In terms of school days, um, yeah, I was a little... Yeah, yeah, it's what you like. You you can swear, mate, we'll let you. Yeah, Uh, yeah. yeah, I was a little shit in school. Um, Actual little shit. So, yeah, by the time I reached 16, I'd already been expelled from school. Not from anything like... (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know not this. Here we go. Not from anything like crazy bad, but I think it was just, I was just a bit of a nightmare. Just a bit. Okay. Like, oh, I, yeah, I was yeah. one of those that in, up until about 13, I was like in the top classes for everything. And then so, like maths. English, okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of knew, I was good in school and then hit an age where like kind of life happens and the, <laughs> the friend life happens at 13. Yeah, yeah. Life happens. Um, and sort of my social circle were doing other things so school just went on the yeah school was just a thing you got put on the back burner (laughs) kind of a back burner yeah Um, but yeah I did some dark stuff (laughs) (laughs) nothing like not not violence related or anything like that just daft stuff in general yeah can you give us a few examples Uh, (laughs) 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 Um, we had a test okay (laughs) <laughs> we had a test once in, in the classroom and I wasn't prepared for it, shall we say? To be honest, I didn't even know that we were having the test because I'd only turned up when I wanted. But anyway, I turned up for this test and it was pretty important. I can't remember what it was about. And we were sat in the classroom and before the test started, like the teacher went off to grab some stuff. I don't know what she grabbed. And I was like, what should we do here? So I uh, smashed the window in the classroom. <laughs> 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 So the teacher came back in and then it turned into rather than doing the test, it was like, who smashed this window? So we spent about 15 minutes going, who done it? And then in the end, about four people just started staring at me so she knew it was me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
yeah, that's one way to get it. I've got sent out of the class for it. I've been sent home, clearly, so. <laughs> that's one way to get out of an exam. Yeah, so just that stuff, really. Um, just a bit of a reprobate. Yeah. Just a little bastard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So what, yeah, okay, so you got expelled at 16. Yeah, so I got expelled in the last year of high school. But then they let me come and sit my... GCSEs. Yeah, they let me come and, I don't know why, because... What did you do in your GCSEs? What did you get in your GCSEs? I don't even know. Yeah. What then? What did you do after that? Um. So <laughs> basically, when I was fifteen, I was on holiday in, in Lebanon, so my dad's Lebanese. Um, and it was like during the Iraq invasion. You remember the news? So like, all you'd see on the news every day was just Iraq, like loads of bombs, like all the night vision, <laughs> like bullets, like tracer bullets. Tracer bullets are like these things, if you shoot them, they like light up so you can see where you're aiming. Okay. I didn't know that at the time, it would just look cool. Yeah, right. So it was on the news. <laughs> and, um, I didn't either, but now I, I do. I was 15, clearly a bit of a gimp. And I was like, instead of thinking, oh wow, we're at war or whatever, I was like, that looks well cool. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be there. That looks well cool. I want a slice of that action. Yeah, yeah, like I was a tool. Um, so the second I got back from the holiday that I was on, um, I went to the careers office like in my hoodie and my baseball cap on because that's just yeah right mate yeah like that. That's yeah right like. <laughs> and I went in and I was like there was this big dude stood there in his uniform I was like I want to join the army and he was like why because I saw a lot of shooting on TV and I fancy a bit of that and he was obviously looking at me like a 15 year old kid like you're, like, you're an idiot yeah and he was like well what do you want to do I was like that I want to do that what I saw on TV and he was like mate there's a regiment that's that good that you even set the queen. And I was like, shit, sign me up right now. Sign me up to that right now. So basically what he'd done is... I thought you were going to turn around and say that. He was like, mate, what? You need yeah, to no, go no. home. No, like, <laughs> I love that. He's like, I see potential in him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he was like, there's a regiment that's that good that you even protect the queen. And I was like, oh my God. I want it. I want it. So basically he signed me up to the Grenadier Guards. And the Grenadier Guards are an infantry regiment but they spend a lot of time there, the dudes that wear the big hats. <laughs> okay. So they like, stand around a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do a lot of marching around. Um, that's what he meant by protect the Queen. So rather than like the cool stuff that I thought, he was like, we'll sign him up. And that's me. basically because that was his regiment. That was his regiment, yeah. Uh, that's what every recruiter does. They're they trying try, to sign you. Just, just sign you. Yeah, of course. So yeah, I didn't know that. Like, yeah. Well, that changed anything. So he's like, yeah, got this little dickhead here. He ain't got a clue what's going on. I'll that's tell you what, I'll have it. That's well. hilarious, isn't it? So, like, people will go to the careers office and they're like, I really like repairing stuff, and they'll sign them up for the infantry, which is the opposite of that because they don't know any better. So, like, because they're just like, Oh, wow, that's they amazing. Don't know anything about the army. Yeah, great, right, of course. I just went in, like, I just want to do what I saw on TV, like, without knowing the reality of what that's mental, is. though, isn't it? That they take advantage of just. They're just like, Right, yeah, fine. Yeah, Put you through the factory. I'll take uh, it. Yeah, that's what you always say, though, isn't it? Yeah. Get, get you into the factory. Yeah, so that to, was, turn you out. That was it. So yeah, they signed me up, and they signed me up to this um, leadership college called AFC Army Foundation College Harrogate. Yeah, but I couldn't join until I was sixteen. So that was the my first day there was the fourth of Jan two thousand and four. Yeah, he would know this because that's where I met. Yeah. Him. Oh, okay. So we met. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. 16. Well, let's dig deep into that. What's What's that about? Yes. Yeah, so, so the Army Foundation College is basically a place where they send kids that want to join the army uh, and if you're under the age of what is it like 16 or 9 months if you're under, if you're under why the, 16 and 9 months because boss? then by the time you pass out of training you can go to war and stuff like that it's what like, they've it's, just it's, worked it's, out the perfect yeah. amount of months yeah. to yeah so you're not allowed to deploy anywhere like operationally until you're 18 yeah Unless so that's like, like the minimum yeah that's hilarious, so they get you into regiment then you've got a few months before okay yeah, yeah yeah got you so if you if you join before the, I, I think it don't quote me on it i think it's 16 and nine months uh so they send you to this army foundation college where you you basically so phase one training usually takes is it six or eight weeks six months. no ba- basic basic six months it's not that's, that's the full training program that, that, that's full infantry training six months but you do i think it's a i think your, your initial phase one is usually eight weeks where they turn you from civvy into recruit yeah yeah so what happened what so, so what's army, those eight weeks what's... so the army foundation college take you on a year course but that those eight weeks and they just they just take you to phase one but they, they teach you things like maths english you do, uh, you, do okay. quali- you do nvqs and qualifications you pick skills, sports. 
it's very much centered around being a college and and and, and getting kids into the right mind frame to then join the army yeah. so that they're pretty disciplined and regimented by the time they actually get to their basic training stations so if you go into any kind of core you know you would be kind of you'd be in like little groups and yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That have meetings about core and let you know what's going on within the kind of engineering uh uh, parts of the army and then you got the infantry which is George and I were and then you got artillery and then you got med and stuff like that and there's different different sections of the army so you kind of learn more about the army while you're in this college and it takes a year so you all kind of go in at the same thing and then you yeah. decide right well I want to go into yeah. this sort of so in in short you've already picked your regiment before so like well, you can I change you can you know. change I did change yeah. actually in the last like two weeks I, I didn't know. know reg till I die Reg, um, Reg, Reg. So yeah, so, so initially joined. So initially joined as a grenadier guy because yeah, right, nice yeah, 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 of course. But in the last sort of two weeks, what passed out. So you were still going to do that the whole time as yeah, well. The whole time through, because I didn't know any better. And then I oh, because at, at that point you still didn't yeah. know and then you what find, it was. Then you find out what drill is. Yeah, you find out what drill is. Like, drills basically marching a lot. And, okay. And I was like, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't lasers this, on the internet. This isn't mate. what. Yeah, hey, drill, yeah. hey, drill is shit. Yeah, it's proper shit. It's a lot of it's a lot of <laughs> polishing boots. I spent a lot of time because towards the end, they kind of you'll have an instructor there who's like a corporal who's been there for a okay. few yeah, years. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like your, there was a grenadier guard corporal, and every every sort of recruit that he knew was going into the grenadier guards in the evening. You have to do extra like polishing of your boots and stuff. And I was like, Why am I doing this and no one else is? This, yeah. isn't, this isn't what I saw on that TV. <laughs> like this. This isn't that. So I was like, yeah. yeah. So I went in and I spoke to like the platoon commander, who's an officer, which is different from a soldier. But a long story. But anyway, I was like, I don't think this is for me. And he was like, listen, I've been waiting for you to say that for a long time. It's the way they still they just keep you the whole time, yeah. like yeah, yeah. So yeah, so because if there's one thing George wasn't good at, it was keeping his shit. <laughs> That's not true, mate. Come on, That's mate. That's not true. Come on, mate. Locker inspections and shit like that. Yeah, but I was. I Did you win them? I didn't know any better. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, but exactly. So you joined up to fight and do stuff like that, and then you're getting told you've got to do extra locker, yeah, yeah, yeah. L- locker inspections and extra kit inspections. What, more, more than policies. anyone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so Just because of what things. you're being pushed into. Yeah, because of the regiment I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm not feeling this. <laughs> and uh, so I changed, to, which is my local infantry regiment after that. So everyone which will have like Cheshire's, is it? Yeah, it was the King's Regiment. So King's it was like a regiment. It was a combination of like Manx and Scousers. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I changed to that. That's quite cool. I was pretty happy that I did. Yeah, and and obviously George and I met while we was in Harrogate. I was quite a quiet guy in Harrogate when I. No, you weren't. I was, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Was no. I was, a, I was a quiet guy. Yeah. So when, when <laughs> Kept myself to myself. I was so, not the Nicky B you know now. <laughs> I miss the old Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I started with a friend who was very nice, and now he's just over. over no. so. I didn't. Well, so, well, <laughs> this is a bit of a so um, like I said, it was a bit of a tour when I was a kid, and I, I hung about in a group. Like we did some daft stuff, and anyway, basically you get put. You're all sixteen, all all lads, and there must have been about forty of us plus. Yeah. So there's four, so there's four four sections of twelve. It starts with so forty eight. Yeah. So f- lo- loads of people, and um, obviously you need to be like, you need to have some good. Mates, you need like a little because you're on you, everyone's on the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're everyone's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of and I'll be honest, I didn't know anyone. I saw Nick, and he was probably about the same size as he is now at 16. And I was like, I like him, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's gonna be one of the best, mate. But then um, you didn't realize I was a shit bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a proper scary until yeah. one day, yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If anyone said boot me, I'd be just like, yeah, all right, yeah, cool. But he was about that big, yeah. He's about as big, but as if, if so, what if, big is you? So you're the same size, yeah, and, you're, yeah. massive, but and you're massive. like, yeah, and, and, and even then, you know, I boxed Midlands champion, British schoolboy champion, and ABA finalist. I never had a fight outside of a ring. I was anyone said anything to me, I was just like, yeah, yeah, all right, mate, yeah, cool. I was, I was a proper big scaredy cat, yeah, yeah, and then I'm, yeah. I'm like gobsmacked. But then, but then there was like a life changing moment in the army where I kind of stood up to someone, and that didn't end up too well for him. And then I, I kind of realised that you know I don't need to be bullied. I don't, I don't, I don't. I, I can, really, it was I, like I, that. I, I can actually, yeah. I, it changed overnight. I thought like, I can actually. Was that in training or actually on? In, in training, yeah. At sixteen, yeah. At sixteen. So just someone was um, giving it big lips. Yeah, so so I, 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 I changed, and then that's when I realised. Did like, you see it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I changed, and then I thought that's 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 when I knew I could handle myself, and 
I, I never, I never Nick, tinted, didn't tinted, And then Nicky B yeah, popped out. Dickhead, I just got, well, I did a little bit, I just got louder. And that's the guy you know now. <laughs> that's mad, isn't it? How, yeah. like, one thing can happen in your life and yeah. you just like, And it was, it was quite funny because the guy that I had the fight with, we was actually mates before it and we was mates after it happened. It was just a silly argument that we had. And it yeah, just escalated, we were, it just... Yeah, me, yeah, me and Black we was mates, we, we, yeah, we, yeah. we didn't not get on. And he was quite a sound bloke. Um, he, he was a guy, so you know like in school you've got like a... Yeah, right, yeah. Cock of the year or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not down with the kids anymore, but that's the <laughs> So I think he wanted to be that. Okay. For our like, platoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He rocked up with a motorbike helmet on, big black eye, like he was quite yeah, outspoken, yeah. he was quite rough. And and he was intimidating, you know what I mean? At that age, yeah. I seen him come in as loud and, and as brash as he was, he was quite intimidating. But he was actually quite a sound person at heart, do you know what I mean? Like, he, he, he wasn't a dickhead or a bully or anything like that. He was... He, he was sound like he was just a bit rough. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. We was, in a, we was in a maths class one day. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, this is... Yeah, yeah, this is... We, we, we I a, thought he was going to carry on uh, and he's just gone, we, right, we, we maths did, class. We was in a maths class one day and uh, we had an argument about how much you get paid when you actually get into battalion. <laughs> right? And we're, we're going to different regiments, so it doesn't even matter. So I would get extra money because I, I, was, I was a paratrooper and I get para pay and his pay would be different because, you know... I think in his regiment, you go straight into Lance Corporal, didn't you? Well, 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 yeah. So, so the way that it worked was different. He was having an argument, and he just pushed me. And as he pushed me, I, I clocked him and, and, and knocked him clean out. And then, <laughs> and, and, no, in the middle of the class, that was like yeah. in progress. Yeah, in the, so mid, in the middle like of the math class. Yeah. The front yeah. as well. And I just, I just knocked him clean out. And then but what happened? So you, you both stood up. Yeah, he, he, I stood up. He pushed me. As he pushed me, I just, boom, I landed one on him, knocked him clean out. And then that was it. That, that was the point when I thought, do you know what? I don't need to be scared. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole, like, because I used to get, I used to get fucking absolutely fucking smashed by the whole platoon. Like, everyone would come into my room and give me shit all the time. And I'd never say anything to anyone. And after that happened, everyone just fucking left me alone, man. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. That's class. <laughs> yeah. And then that's when George was like, yeah, I need to be pals with this guy. <laughs> was it? Yeah, I only singled him out and then I realised it was a bit of a letdown. <laughs> <laughs> so when he did that, I was like, yeah. Maybe you I'm were like, thank God. <laughs> yeah, thank God, yeah. yeah. I didn't even realise that, though, that, like, in terms of everyone went in in the same sort of thing and then people all just then get, sort of, go off to the, oh, what, only they're different. There, though, only oh, there. Only so there. Yeah. The, if, if you're older than that, then you'll get put into, so, like, there's an infantry training centre. So, like, we, we were both in the infantry. So, if we would have joined at 18, we would have both went straight there. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But because we were young, we went to this, like, leadership college. First, and then we went is that across the whole UK? Everyone goes to Harrogate if you're under. Um, I think there was. Is there a f- few pretty, popping about? Much, yeah, yeah uh, it, 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 I think it, it's, it's different for each service. So Army, Navy, and RAF. Okay, yeah, yeah. But the Army is, is Harrogate, and the Navy. Uh, I think the Royal Marines come under the Navy, don't they? Yeah. So it's all the same. If a so Marine, if a Marine ever tries to go off, just tell him he's in the Navy. So, right? so it's and Marines out there. You heard me. That's, that's, my, that's my brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah. Bit, yeah, yeah. Go back to that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, no. So is this is the whole thing in Harrogate as well? It's kind of just to put you, keep you on a bit of a path, and sort you all out of it. Give you a bit of education. Give you a bit of like discipline. And then it's a case of, right, now you actually go, when you get to 18, you then go into actual training specific to your to, regiment. To be fair, mate, you, spend, you spend most of your time. So you do that education piece. There's like a the training hall for your education piece. But a lot of it was military training. As you still are you doing still all like, like, okay, all right, you okay. most of your time getting absolutely thrashed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet they've bullied the yeah, crap out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were bastards, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, like, definitely didn't sign up for that shit. <laughs> like, I, I can really, imagine it's just yeah, so, like, absolutely next, next level. The thing that I saw at 15 was like, <laughs> you know I mean? I could be dead cool, get a gun and stuff, and actually just... You could crawl in through, you, wouldn't you get screamed at. Yeah, yeah. you realise like, you're a bit of a tool. Yeah. Like, what was I thinking? But did, was there, a, like... Was there ever a point with either of you where you thought, screw this, I'm going home? Loads. Loads. But like yeah. really, really, like... Uh, I, 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 I was never going to quit. I, 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 that's I, what I mean. Yeah. Boys, or was it always just, just be lying in bed one night thinking, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever... But it wasn't a case of ever like, you know what, 
I'm gonna. I can't be asked this anymore. Nah, loads of people do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can imagine the dropout was so mad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, the, the dropout because for that reason, people would see it for you and go, "Oh, I want to do that." Yeah, and then they'd be like, "Well, that's not what we're doing." Yeah, it's not. Yeah, and so then, like, yeah, when I joined for the wrong reasons. Yeah, hundred percent joined for the wrong reasons. Yeah, um, but I'm sure. Would you obviously, if you could? Would I change it? Yeah, no. exactly. That's what no, I mean. No, no, no. It, it, it definitely made me the man I am today. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course it did, because yeah. you otherwise, Correct. otherwise you'd have been sat here not saying anything the last half an hour. Hey, little dicky. <laughs> you're right, little dicky. <laughs> you'd have been like me. Yeah. And then from there, you went on to Catrick next part. Yeah, yeah. So we we both did. Yeah, yeah we did. You. What's um, Catrick? So that's the infantry training centre. So okay. If you Got you. Join the infantry. Oh dear. Um, if, if you was over sixteen and nine months. Yeah. You join, so you go there to do like your, your phase two training, so your infantry, like specific skills. Sort of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Um, and then once you pass out of that, you then join your regiment and go from there. So, yeah. yeah that's what we and then that's when you split up. That's yeah. when we split up. But yeah. we spent most, most of the time we had off, either he'd come to Manchester or I'd go to the Midlands. Okay, yeah. We were best we, at that. Point. We was really close, you know. Yeah, we, were <laughs> we were really close. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty much it for how we met in the first part yeah that is sick and then you went to you ended up going to the the Cheshire's not the Cheshire's is it what's it called now the King's the the King's Regiment which which was good bad you tell me yeah I mean I I spent 12 years in the army so we went a lot did a lot of things yeah Um, was that with the same regiment the whole time different so it was a, I've got a bit of a weird story which is probably why I'm here I guess um, <laughs> <laughs> correct. correct correct so yeah so I joined as a soldier so obviously we joined at 16 15 16 did our year's training did our basic training so he went off to the powers I went off to the King's Regiment yeah loved it um, uh, yeah so we where do we start like it's you and your regiment it's completely yeah. different um, you're part of a family now. That's your like you wear yeah, a yeah, badge yeah. and you yeah, wear yeah. a uniform, and, and that's it. And it's and it was great. Um, went off to Iraq at 18. Um, fully enough, Nick and I, yeah, Nick and I were in the same on the same cycle. So yeah. he was out in Iraq as well, but in a different place. So you never saw each other when you were actually out no, in. No. But we used to send each other blueies and, and blueies. What's it's, a bluey? Yeah, it's, tell it's, me. It's not porn, right? Well, it's just a little letter which is free post. But George and I used to draw pictures. And just send them to each other. Sort of, just like stupid. <laughs> just free post service. Yeah. Yeah. Send each other that sort. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like usually, like it's like family, so family members. Yeah, yeah, like, of course. Send them yeah, yeah, yeah. And like they'll tell. I remember like my stepmom was really good actually when I was in Iraq. She used to send me stuff every day just to like. So when I first went out, I told my family, oh, "Don't bother." It's That's only, bad. It's only six, seven months. Don't send yeah. me anything. It'll be fine. I must have been there for about a week, and I was like. Yeah. I rang, when I got the first chance, I rang everyone I knew and like, sent me stuff. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. So imagine if the UK go into isolation. We've already got it nailed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, send me stuff all the time. So, so that was quite, so we used to get like letters every couple of days and stuff like that. We used to do that. But um, yeah, it was a mad, mad place to be. Really good art. Yeah, so, so that was six, seven months uh, tour. I, I actually had my first leave rotation, so I was the first one to go on leave. So I deployed two weeks late, and then I did six months solid with no, <laughs> with no break. <laughs> what did you do? I got a two week break halfway through. So why did you have your break at the start? It's just the way. It's just look the way the cookie stack, crumbles. It's, it's yeah. just the look of the draw. They have to stagger the break so they've only got a few people leaving at the same. So of course, you okay. You can continue to be operational. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I was only like sort of halfway through. But I got blown up about two days before it, so I kind of went home. Excuse sat. me. <laughs> yeah. Let's track that back. <laughs> yeah, so. Go on, spin a war story, George. Spin a war story, right? <laughs> the um, no, it's, I got it's, one. It's, it's not a. <laughs> keep, a keep talking. Keep going, mate. Right, it's, it's, it's less of a funny story, this one. Um, so when we were out there, it was quite. Cut, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Hostile. Yeah. So it was still pretty well, that's all you heard, didn't it? It was just constant people getting what is it? A I E I E. It was yeah. just that was a yeah, constantly yeah. what you'd just, hear on the news. Was just that was yeah, yeah, yeah. that was what all of you guys had to look out for. Yeah. Well, this was it. So, um, so I've been. So when I was out there, my role was I, I was an interpreter because I went on an Arabic course, which is a clear another story. But um, 
So I did a lot of interpreting with like the platoon commander. Of course, yeah, yeah, officer, okay. So he was a second lieutenant. Um, but I also drove a thing called the Warrior, which is like an armoured fighter. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah I know yeah, what you so mean. So I drove one of those as well. Um, so we were like the generally the lead vehicle in our platoon. So I was his driver. Um, so yeah, so I've been I've been blown up three times. Um, by what animals. driving driving so over? Driving, yeah, not so not really driving over them. They're not like. So I'll, some you, you've got plenty of different ones. It's long to go into, but in short, um, most of them are sort of triggered. So you'll they'll wait till you drive. So past. it would be someone's looking at you through a someone window and you. someone spotted you. Yeah, and, yeah. So wow. Exactly like you've been spotted. And they just send a text message to a phone that's straight to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that happened a bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, one of them was two days um, before I came home for my two weeks off, and there was a fatality as well. So oh, mate, it, was, Jesus. it was probably the worst day of my life. And then, like, and then you've got to go later, back like, go back to this. Well, no, until two days later, like, oh, it's your turn to go and leave. And I'm like, probably not spoken for two days. I'm like, all right, <laughs> go home. And then all your family are like, great to see you, but it's weird. It's, it's weird. Is that the hot, as, like, I, from just people that I know, it's like, that's what I would feel is probably one of the hardest things. It's weird. Because you, you, you're you all of a sudden, you're in that where you've just had a mate die and it's like yeah. this is mad yeah. and then it's you're back home in civvy life with someone who's you're sat in a cafe shop and someone's pissed off because they haven't got milk in their coffee yeah. and you must be sat there thinking like yeah that was a what the hell is yeah, going on i'm going back to that in two yeah weeks. and you're like actually i want to i want to get back yeah yeah uh, yeah it's weird like yeah. you don't not for a second then i think i'm not going back yeah do, course, like yeah. but not you'd be surprised it's not that many yeah, because um, you've kind of left, and it's not only everyone that. out there. You get introduced. No, but that's what I mean. You want it. You want to be yeah, yeah, yeah. back out yeah. there. But it was it was just surreal. Like you go back for two weeks, you can't relax because you know yeah. you know what you're coming back to. Yeah, you're in an environment that you don't really understand anymore because actually you've gone from what you've grown up in and what you've always known to be real to like your new real, which is you can't go for you can't go out to the bathroom at night because you might get blown up. Yeah. It's weird. Like, yeah, it's, it's just, weird. there's no, and it's like that, it's just all of a sudden. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, when I come back from Iraq, because we had no decompression, and de generally what they do is they take you to Cyprus for two weeks, or the regiments, they take you to Cyprus for two weeks and just say, right, go and enjoy yourselves. They have a few classes on for you and talk you down about, you know, what you've been through and stuff like that, and they just try and help you mentally. But due to the operations that we were doing uh, with One Para, we just went, we literally flew straight back into the UK, got let, clean the weapons, and said, right, Go, you got go off. And when I come back, I was just so, I was just so fueled. I was just on the piss all the time. My head went, and it took, it took a point where my mom turned around to me and she's just like, Nick, I don't need to come home anymore. She's like, I can't handle it. Wow. Yeah, yeah my and, mom wrote me a letter yeah. as well, actually. Yeah. And the, same uh, kind of thing. Yeah, I went back to camp for uh, for the last week, and then it kind of, it was like I didn't speak to my mom all week. I'm quite close with my mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it was like a slap in the face, you know. And I thought, well, shit, I need to sort my act out, and then. You know, once I got back from Afghanistan, I wasn't the same because I knew how to handle it and I knew how to kind of, you know, integrate myself back into society. But once I got back from Iraq, I was only about 19 years old. Is that the, what would you say, was it age? Would you say it was because it was your first tour? Everything. Just everything. It, 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 do, do a lot of people say the same thing? Like, like, is the first one always? Yeah. I know, so like, one, it's, one it might be a stupid people, question. People don't really talk about it that much. No. It, yeah. And people yeah. handle it differently as well. So, the, yeah. the things like, you can bear in mind, Nick and I went to the same country at the same time. Yeah. Had completely different experiences. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Complete, so, like, even Nick, like, I'll open up to Nick about stuff, or like we used to. But the reality is, even he doesn't understand it because. He gets it more than anyone else. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because he wasn't there at that time. Yeah. It's, it's the, the, only people, the, the only people that will understand what he went through are the people that were in that car with him or in that warrior with him. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. The of only course. people that will understand is, I mean, what happened. And it's the same vice versa on, on you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. On jobs that we did when we was out there. It's. Well, it's, yeah, so that, yeah. But that's, that's what it is, what it is. But, <laughs> um, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> um, Yes. No, but no, it's just mega yeah. interesting though. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's life, is it? It's, it's what happens. And you know, to me, being in the army seems like a lifetime ago. I, I got out in, in 2012 and I, I forget it even happens sometimes. Yeah, Until yeah. I speak to Georgia, if I, if I meet a friend from the, the Paris, I've not seen for a while and, we, and you talk about things, you, you actually forget that you're in there. Yeah. Sometimes people ask me questions and they're like, you know, how do you feel about this, this, this? And I, until I answer, you know, I, I would never not answer somebody. 
However, I don't sit there and say, yeah, so, mm. you know, chucking out war stories left, right, and centre. You, you know yeah, but I've, I've never really met anyone that's like that. Yeah, because the, the only people that are like that are people that haven't been there <laughs> and, and they generally live off other people's stories. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's the thing, actually. Weird, really. the, the cold wall to me is. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that actually it? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. The thing, don't yeah. Worry. yeah, it's a proper term, yeah. Where people hear other people's stories and then they tell it as though they've But then the, the, the impression I get from that as well is the reason people don't is because when you actually do speak to someone and you ask them questions, like, I've never really met anyone that's then, like, doesn't really say much. It's like if you ask them, they'll yeah. say, yeah. but it's because it's not really something that people want to talk about that much. Because it's not something you want to go shouting yeah. from the rooftop saying, yeah. like, about like that yeah, story like why would you want to it's one of those when like if I know we're probably going off topic a little bit but if like if you ask me something I'll, I'll tell you to a degree that's but what I mean I'll, yeah but, reality, but otherwise you're like but the reality is you'll never understand no and I'm, not, I'm not trying to like say oh you just won't get it but it's like you, you kind of won't so no because yeah. Well, yeah but with the whole thing as well I, I feel like when I think of it with my life, I'm like, wow, it's just, it's so naive and just really it's just, like, it's just different, mate. Because it's another world. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's it it's, is. But it's, it's, it's different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, there, there are people that are raised in the favelas and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and war is their life. Do you yeah. Know what I mean, there's people that are raised in war torn countries that to them it's just normal life and we could never comprehend, you know, having only spent six months in that situation when they're spent their whole lives in it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just a different level, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And people just have different upbringings, you know, and what other people perceive as mental stress. You know, you, you could get stressed out of the fact that your water's not cold coming at the tap and that could really get in your head. Do you know what I mean? It all depends on how you perceive stress and how you perceive situations. Yeah, but then that's what I mean, is like stuff yeah. like that, it just, you just go, oh, will you like get a problem? But yeah. I know what you mean. It's it, yeah. it's as you said, It's it, yeah. people then relate stress in different ways. So yeah. do you have to say, well, actually... Doesn't matter what it is. Everyone, everyone does have their own problems, and everyone's yeah, it's everyone, yeah. yeah. It's but it's just yeah. it just puts it in perspective, doesn't it? So then, so then Georgie come back from Iraq. How many? Well, how many tours did you both do? I just did Iraq. I just yeah. Did. Okay. Yeah. I did Iraq and Afghanistan. What then? Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Okay. So what happened after yeah. Iraq tour? Um. What well, as in terms of my career progression? Yeah. 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 yeah so I came back from Iraq. Um, Whilst I was in Iraq, one of my platoon commander at the time, um, I said to me, "Have you ever considered going to the standards?" Okay, right, yeah, so yeah. So just sat there like, yeah, thought about it loads, mate. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of the same accent, but the opposite of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so but standards is where you do your officer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so I, I was genuinely, have I told you this that I was gonna, I was really, really gonna go. Santa, so like I was having interviews with my school because we had like a you CCF, a anyway. <laughs> we had like CCF, so like combined cadet. And I was, yeah. I loved it, I used to find it so much fun. And I was going through interviews at college, and we had like a group interview. And then I was getting to the stage where I was like having one to ones, and it was really like I was going for it. And then it was, I told my sister about this the other day, actually, that there was a trigger when my dad, my dad sat me down and he said, do you, do you really want to do this? And I said, yeah, like, I, I, I love it at school. I, I want to do this as a career. Yeah. And he genuinely said to me, he said, no, no parent wants to outlive their kid. Like, just have a think about it. Yeah. And it, it, it just switched. It was, I was like, wow. And it just then, I just literally, it went it completely, it was all gone. So yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. That, that's, I think that happens to a lot of people, didn't it? Do you know what I mean? But yeah. sorry, so go on about Santos. Oh yeah, so um, so they asked me, and the first time I was just like, it's not happening. It's not, it's yeah. not like I got expelled from school. Um, with a little scally. But why bit. would that matter? <laughs> so Do they take that in consideration yeah, going in? Yeah, it must be so. Oh, right. Generally, if, you, if you're on Santos for an officer, you've got pretty good background. Yeah, but you've they take you through like, you go to uni and stuff, don't you, still, and they pay for it. Oh, that's where I, they would... Yeah, yeah, So this is, it's different. So okay, you, all right. You're obviously going through the education process and you will say, I'm good, I'll, the army will fund your uni if you then commit Well, that's what, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's different. Whereas okay. I was a, so, I was you were already in. Join the army. At yeah, 16, yeah, okay. Join you if you went on tour. So what doesn't happen that often is soldiers becoming officers. Yeah. So they're two different, they're completely two different career streams. So you're a soldier, you're then corporal, you're lance corporal, corporal, sergeant, colonel sergeant, sergeant major, and you can be in the army for like 22 yeah, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get to sergeant major and you spent your entire career as a soldier. 
Yeah. Um, and then you've got officers which come in. So like the, it's like second lieutenant who will lead a full platoon yeah. of men, including people that have been in the army for 15 years. And, te- yeah. and, te- and, and it'll be his first and te- time and out. Technically, yeah. And technically, the second lieutenant outranks the sergeant major. Yeah, so that, so so yeah, in, in theory... It, it, it yes. doesn't work like that, but technically he does. In theory, In yes. terms of like, so if you sergeant, looked at... A sergeant major will call a second lieutenant, sir. Okay, right, right, yeah, Even okay. Even though he's, he's been in the army yeah. for whatever, and he, like, he's the right-hand man to another officer who is like a colonel, which is weird. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's, that's just... Why weird. is that just because he's an officer? It's, 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 an officer it's the rank structure, how it works. Yeah. What makes an officer so much yeah, higher? Leadership. So the leadership just because team. they're immediately... They're, they're immediately in charge of the platoon. Yeah. So as soon as you pass Sandhurst and then do your extra training, same as you would do what is officer training and leadership training, yeah. you will then get a platoon of soldiers. So you'll have like, so we joined as soldiers, some private soldiers. Um, you'll have a load of soldiers. You have some lance corporals, which is a step up. You'll yeah. have like four or five corporals, which is even more of a step up. You look after the soldiers as well. Uh, you'll have a sergeant who's probably been in the army for like 12 plus years. Okay, yeah. Um, who will again be your right hand man? And that platoon of soldiers, like thirty five plus soldiers, are yours. Yeah. Wow. You're the boss. So like you're straight out, Sander. You're the boss. That's got to be hard though for some people. Yeah. yeah it's not like some, people. obviously, some people will be. But, but, but also, like some people, well, that's if, that's got to be. If you don't like someone, you respect the rank slide, and that's it. And that's and that's the way the military is disciplined. Yeah. So you do. You it's still do what you're told, don't you? Yeah. It's not like here where you go, piss off, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can't um, so yeah, so the first time they asked, I was like, "Yeah, no thanks." Yeah, no, it's not for me that. I mean, well, I wouldn't even know where to start. Like, it's not for me. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, they came back and said, "Listen, like this, this isn't. We're not making you any promises. We're clear, you've got to get there. You've got to get to Sanders. You've got to pass on." Yeah, yeah, we're not saying that you're going to do it. Like, yeah. If you say no to this, would you ever regret it? And I was like. <laughs> But then it was like, I never thought, yeah, I could do it. I could, part, like, it wasn't me going, I could do it, but I don't want to. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Even, even that was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like, what, what, I've not got it in me, like, I don't know what it is. Like, I okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, in the end, I was like, yeah, sure, like, I'll, I'll give it a try. Um, so we got back from Iraq. I still went on a promotion course from, from, from private to Lance Corporal as, like, an insurance policy in case the test, I failed some of the tests. Yeah. Up, so. So I went on my Lance Corporal's course, did really well, promoted straight away from that. Um, and then, yes, yeah, started the sort of tests for officer selection. And I remember, uh, <laughs> well, I remember, so you turn up, there's like a two-day one first, and you have to pass that, and it's down south somewhere. What, when you say pass, what, what what's involved? So it's like aptitude tests. Like pre-selection. Uh, okay. Fitness tests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Command tasks, that kind of stuff. Um one of them you have to host a debate, I don't even know what that was. It's just... So anyway, I went down, didn't really have much prep for it, because I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. And um, so I turned up in my suit in day one, my dad, <laughs> my dad did my tie for me. <laughs> and uh, went there and like met a lot of different, like this isn't a negative in any way, but I met people like, from a lot of, I haven't really met in my life before. Okay, so yeah, yeah, So these were people that were going, clearly doing the selection for co Yeah, like, a lot of affluency. Okay, right, yeah. So, yeah. I know yeah, what you mean. Anyway, different people from what I grew up with. I feel like that's where, if I'd have gone in, that's probably, I'd have been in that Yeah, you've bunch. been one of those people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, <laughs> got through the first day and I was like, was, it was good, to be fair, it was a good day. Um, and then the second morning we all got back into suits, so no dramas, got my suit on, started getting ready and I was like, shit. Tie. Can't tie my tie. <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking, like, I remember sitting there on my bed, fully dressed apart from my tie, thinking, I knew I shouldn't have done this. I couldn't, I couldn't tie, I couldn't tie my own tie. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I waited until everyone left to go to like report for the day, and I grabbed this cleaning lady, bless her, she was nice, and I was like, listen, I don't know how to tie my tie, and she was like, oh, bless. And she did my tie for me. I still remember this. No way, that's sick. I can't sick. remember her name. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that, so she did my tie, and then we ran off to get there, and then. Um, Got, did the, did the second day, a couple of weeks later, got um, pulled into like a, a major's office, so he's like a company commander, and he was like, well done, you're going for phase two, but prior to past, so yeah, yeah, yeah. before phase two of the selection, I had to do a three-month course, which was fucking 
I remember seeing that book that you got, uh, uh, the etiquette course that you had to do. Yeah, yeah, and it was just like, so they, <laughs> you'd still do like some leadership training. It was pretty chilled out. Um, so instead of getting called Corporal Eid, I'd be called Mr. Eid. Um, <laughs> even though it's all lands called Mystery. Because it's Mystery. Mis- <laughs> mis- <laughs> mis- <laughs> Why? Um, Why? Well, because it was part of your, so there were a few people that had been selected from soldiers to attend the second phase of the officer selection. But they wanted you to get a little bit of life experience, I guess, first. Okay. So, like, getting blown up in Iraq wasn't enough. It was more like... <laughs> yeah. 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 Forget um, about that, mate. It, it, was, it, 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 more, it was Stop more... him talking like that. Yeah, right. He used to do this lip thing. He's like, come on. Like, every time. <laughs> like Rhea Ferdinand. Yeah, what's going yeah. on, mate? <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was It was that bad. <laughs> and it was more so you'd do... You'd write a lot of essays. You would... You, every Sunday... Every Monday, you'd have a Sunday Times test. So on a Sunday, you'd have to read the Sunday Times, and then you'd come in on Monday and you'd get asked, like, you'd get asked multiple choice questions on it. Um, they would take you out to museums, uh, the theatre, the ballet. Become more cultured, darling. Were you, were you starting to have those thoughts again, like, what am I doing? This isn't what I signed was, up for. You know it was all right. Um, really? Okay. Yeah, I thought you were going right. to say otherwise. I, mean, I say it was all right, but I, I don't think I fully engaged. Appreciated it. So I remember once we, we went on we went, we went out to a day in London we went to see the museum and there was another infantry guy um, on this course so clearly him and I were like besties because it's like infantry stay together yeah of course um, so we went to a museum throughout the day and it was a bit pants and uh, <laughs> in the evening we had to go to the theatre but we had a three hour gap so it was like three hours in London do what you want meet us at this address yeah so like, yeah sweet pub yeah pub so everyone else is like Doing taking it all in and it, yeah yeah right yeah we went to this pub and it was rough like, no we found it and was like let's just do some shots so then they ended up so it was just him and i and ended up like six blokes that we didn't know just started smashing shots so anyway, we turned back to the theater <laughs> Stinky. Like, smashed and um so you had like these so it was all run by captains so army officers are all captains uh, okay they're all, all right they're yeah they're basically army teachers but they're all captains so they're quite high yeah um, so they were sat behind us, and we were sat in this row. And I remember just getting like, like a. And I woke up, and it was one of them going, You've been asleep for the last 45 minutes. I'll speak to you after this. Oh, so, no. Shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> is, that a, is that a proper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'll be able to him the next day. Um, but yeah, anyway, I we went through the training, three months long of that kind of stuff. It was all right. Yeah. Um, and then I went for my week selection, and. Past. So yeah, round two of selection is, is a week long. Knew how to do a tie at that point because I yeah. practice. <laughs> <laughs> that book that you had, you know. Oh, the Brett's. It was the Brett's. Uh, yeah. Like tells you how to eat an apple when you cut it in quarters rather than just bite. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's it's how to act like a gentleman. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Whoops. Um, yeah. Past. Yeah, phase. but they. Yeah, but yeah. 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 Past phase. Past sort of the second testing phase, and that was me. Up into how did you find Sandhurst in terms of? Uh, academically and and the writing you had to do and the essays that was and stuff fine like to be really. honest I think that the course that I went on for three months helped because I got there yeah. and it was just it was like being in phase one training again yeah. but at a different level um, so you're teaching officers now rather than soldiers so you're with different people and that, again that's not a negative it's just different yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a different structure. like the place the grounds are incredible I remember driving in there thinking like what is this yeah i'm never gonna get through this um and then i remember i met this guy um called harry (laughs) and he was the polar opposite to me really yeah yeah i mean so he i remember harry yeah harry boy what a great guy i mean he's still alive he's not dead talking (laughs) um and i remember meeting him on day one and it was the opposite to nick so it was like nick's massive and a bit scary i'm gonna be his best mate this guy is like how do I explain this without sounding rude? He was like, he was a posh twat. Okay, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you'd know, you know that, George. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how do I explain him without sounding rude? Yeah, I I was posh getting, twat. I was getting a bit stuck there. Um, but he's him like a nice bloke, actually. Yeah, right, yeah. And we ended up getting put in a room together at first. And he turned out to be one of my best mates during training. Oh, he's really class, guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good guy. Um, but yeah, it was a different experience. It was, don't get me wrong, it was hard. Yeah. Hard, like probably the hardest thing I've done. 
Um, but just so different to what you'd do, come from. Doing it for like the responsibility that you get at the end of it is unreal. So your training has to be hard. Like it's all leadership. Yeah, it can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's not a case of you just looking after yourself now. It's well, I know it's not like, that, but like it's now like shit. Yeah, I've got yeah, a whole is, team now. This is real, and the thought of it is, if I get through all this training, I'm going to come out of here and command people that were a higher rank than me, probably older than me, and they're all going to call me sir, and I'm going to have to tell them what to do. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is a thing. This is real. This is real. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we're through the process. Like it was tough. Don't be wrong. Um, How long was you an officer for? I commissioned in two, the beginning of 2010 and yeah. I left. I was probably about six years. Yeah. So, so t- really, yeah. you should actually address George as Captain Ed because he, he carries his title on into, into oh. civilian life. So if he, re- re- if he receives mail, it'll be to Captain Ed. I mean, look, you can choose. Yeah. Like, yeah. You'd be a bit of a <laughs> 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 George actually had a friend in uh, in in um, in training. Alex, what was his surname? Oh, Alex J. <laughs> yeah, but, no. but but when he becomes a command, we can't talk about that. Cap- no, but when he becomes a a a, a, a commander of a, he's a, a captain co- a captain gay. No, oh, one one higher, major major gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless major him. Gay. <laughs> Which um, I just thought it was funny. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. No. Um, so yeah. Well. So after that, you did six years as an officer. Yeah. And then you decided you had enough. Why did you leave the army? Why did I leave? Yeah. Why? I I done it all to be honest. So I completed never, it, mate. Uh, com- <laughs> completed it. Yeah. So clearly, I've never imagined becoming an officer in the army ever. Yeah. 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 Did. As a path when you saw it on TV. Yeah. 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 So I yeah clearly and then uh, commissioned became a second lieutenant had a platoon loved it. Um, spent two years leading the platoon as a platoon commander, promoted to lieutenant, went over to, it was really cool actually, I went, so I was posted back to Catrick, so where I did my infantry training, I was then a platoon commander training new recruits. No so way. So I got back there and it was like looking at 42 versions of myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was nice. Um, little fuckers though. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, is this what I used to be like? Yeah, I used to be like that. Yeah, yeah, it was, but it was great because obviously you train them, obviously you lose a few, like it is what it is, and then you get to the end point and you you train all the guys. So I had, yeah. like, I had a sergeant with five corporals, so they were my training team, and we trained all these guys, and it was amazing. So at that point, I promoted during that stage as well, so I promoted the captain. So like I've I've come through this. So like when you used to interview them, I'd, I'd say something like, "Listen, I was I was you." For yeah, yeah, yeah. Position now we're captain. They'd be like. Yeah, yeah, they'd be like, like it what? Was surreal, yeah. It didn't really happen. Um, so yeah, that was cool. Uh, came back, took over a special weapons platoon. So that's like now a platoon of 60 plus soldiers, including a sergeant mate, side a sergeant mate with a right hand man. So, you know, before when I said, like, people will be like 20 years in the army and become a sergeant major. Yeah. Um, that's what this guy was, and he was now my right hand man. I was a captain. So we got a pretty, to a pretty good level in the army. Like, that's mad. Most people can't say they've done that. So, no, 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 no. Like, it was a great career. Um, and I knew that my next job, basically every two years as an officer you change jobs. After you've done a couple of sort of leadership roles, you then have to do something which is pretty much like a desk-based role. Okay. Um, for a couple of years, be then to promote to get another leadership command role. Yeah. Um, and that wasn't a bit of me. To and that, at that point you were like, see you later, mate. Yeah, that wasn't a bit of me. Um, like I owned a house in Manchester. I was spending no time there at all. I thought if I'm gonna do a desk based job, I've been in the army for eleven years at this point. If I'm gonna do a desk based job, I might as well try and do it for a bit more money in Manchester. And do like a actual just yeah. yeah, desk. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so I left. It's crazy though. Cause I have to a year's notice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's hard. It's lo- it's hard enough giving a month notice. It was it was pretty scary to be fair because obviously I joined at sixteen. And it counts down as I've well. Done, I've done on, yeah. absolutely nothing else. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. in 12, 11, 12 years, I've done nothing else. And now I've got to give a year's notice. Who's going to want to hire, like, who's going to hire you? And like, what's, it's crazy. So you're basically just pressing the button in the dark, hoping that something will happen. Is that why they give you a year? Yeah. Because then they hope yeah. that you well, find you, something you concrete. No, it's the other way around. They give you a year because you're scared. 
because they don't want you to leave. <laughs> if I said to you, I'd say you can start interviewing now and if, if they offer you a job for two months' time, take it. You'd, you'd be up for it, right? Yeah. But if I said you can't, no one's going to want to contact you for a year's notice. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be a job when in 20... <laughs> well, within within just the three or four months, you have to make sure that you've done like previous qualifications and you've got yourself in a position to then then you can so then you can then project onto people saying, look, I'm leaving the army in three or four months, and then you've got like a fine gap where yeah 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 where you can start interviewing and go with companies saying, look, I leave on this date. And sometimes the army are a little bit more lenient; they let you leave a month. You're right, 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 to be fair. Yeah, yeah. You me six months mainly. Oh wow! Yeah, it was good. Is uh, that because you're fat? Yeah, I got two. I got two months. Yeah, he looks after me a little bit. What? What? But so was that when you? What was your job coming out of the army? I, so they gave me paid leave. Um, after during that like time, I was just at home. Really okay, all right, fair. Why did they give you paid leave? Um, so they do anyway. They put you on garden leave for a little bit, but I think at that time, the battalion was deployed on an exercise somewhere, and it was kind of like I'm. They've already replaced my role because I told them I'm leaving. Yeah. So they brought someone in, and it was kind of like you don't, you don't really need. You okay. All right. Fair. So you can just. They did me a favour, basically. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and yeah, one of my good friends, um, she worked for KPMG, so she said, listen, we're recruiting ex-military officers. Send me. It's a weird like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. a direct person, send, isn't it? Send, send me your CV and I'll pass it on. And, um, yeah, but then leadership, isn't it? It's leadership well, skills. It. So, like, but, like, I was a qualified project manager. I've led a platoon. Yeah, of exactly. Plus soldiers. Um, I've done an operational tour. I've done all these courses from leadership and management. Like, I'm not. So, you know, I'm not just. I haven't just come out as the same 16 year old that I went in as. No, no. Idiot, you at, know, this, no. at this point, I was a completely different person. Um, so yeah, so they invited me in to Canary Wharf, like say, can you come in next week for an interview? I wasn't, I didn't even apply for the job. I just sent them a CV and I was like, uh, yeah. Okay. So I went in there, um, spent about a week trying to figure out what KPMG meant. <laughs> <laughs> what was this time for? <laughs> <laughs> um, and went in and it was brutal. Really? Brutal, yeah. Yeah. I left there and I was like, what was the point in that? I was nearly threw up on the tube. Um, and then about two days later, they called me again said, can you come in for another one? <laughs> this time it was, at, it was in Manchester, so I was like, yeah, sweet. So I did that, that was all right. And then um, less than a week later, so it all happened in like three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Less than a week later, they asked me to come in for another one. Um, that was in the Midlands, and I met this dude, and he was like, listen, I'm a senior partner at KPMG. This isn't an interview. You've already got the job, I just wanted to say hello. <laughs> like, oh, oh, what's the job? Yeah. <laughs> they just so, wanted you so basically it's a six month they put me on a six month internship um, they stick you in a team see how you get on and then lead them no it's not even that not lead them no. like, it was a council it's one of the world's biggest accounting firms so they yeah, yeah, yeah. put you in a team and go see how you get on um, people ask people will write appraisals on your performance and stuff like that and then Anyone within KPMG who like sees your appraisals and sees you and thinks we want a bit of that will then can I offer you a job. So then but you what, come on there like worldwide system as a face. Well, yeah, but yeah. basically. But then what are you man? There. What are you managing? Just the people. No, it wasn't. So I joined as a project manager. Um, okay. Did a bit of work for a part of the KPMG based in Manchester. Um, met a few people along the way who were clearly really good, um, and. One day, about three months in, one of them said, listen, you're free for a call. So I spoke to him on the phone and he was like, listen, mate, I know you've got six months in this role, um, but if you're up for it, I'm going to offer you a job now so we can take you for an offer. I was like, yes, I'm going <laughs> Yeah, done. So yes, then, two years there, it was amazing. Um, went to EY for a fixed term contract. And then at this point, like Nick and I, we've always talked about like, how we setting up a business together and like when we were kids it was like we'll take over the world and, like, <laughs> and, to, be, and to be fair like 10 years later we were still like we need to take over the world so, yeah yeah sick um we kind of sat and discussed how we did it really yeah like, how do we do it what yeah. do we both like what do we enjoy doing and that's where sort of genie comes from yeah that's where genie was born yeah. so what we were saying before you know we we thought about Genie and how it would run before we thought about becoming personal trainers you know and, and to yeah. us it was delivering that service and and stuff like that, that and the business important. yeah that was more important to us yeah 
So we set up Genie before we became qualified in the first place. It is sick though, because I, I thought it was the other way around. I thought it was a case of you were both PTs and you went, wait, why don't we do this together? No. So, no, so, so George's contract had finished and instead of carrying on with EY at the time, right, he just sacked it, uh, got his personal, well, we both did our personal training qualification. I was still in full-time employment. I was a project manager. How did you both do your qualification? Uh, online stroke weekends. Yeah. It, it's, so it was like an online course, but you went in for All like, online? Or no, is it like kind of what Sarah's just Yeah, done? yeah. So it's like a 50-50 course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because we was in the army for a certain amount of time, we got uh, E-enhanced learning credits. So the army would pay for some courses for us. Yeah. So we just used that. And the army I paid. say that even though how long ago was it when you left? Yeah. I think I was on the cusp, wasn't I? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was on the cusp of just just losing it on it, and I managed to get it in time. But they they pay eighty percent of the course cost, which was that's you know, nuts. really helpful. Um, so we got that boxed off, and then George left. George had already left his job at that point. So he'd become a, a personal trainer at Spinning Fields. I was still in full time employment at the time, still giving it beans. Bit of part time PT, bit of full time, full time at the desk. <laughs> Imagine him working in yeah. office. Just uh, 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 sometimes I was working. I was literally up at half five, cycle to work, get back, take PT, and I'd be in the gym till like eight nine, and then back to bed, back up again. And, yeah, and it was just yeah, it was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, and then that's that's well, that, that's, that's, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's it. Team Ginny. Team That's history. Uh, I don't know. I'm still waiting for my big dicky T-shirt. Have, have we got a little dicky one? Yeah, we could get we could get him a little dicky one. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> get him a girl's top. <laughs> yeah, then the arms would fit actually. Yeah. What about? Didn't you have a? Um, you generally had just one one time, didn't you? It said like big, yeah, big Al or something. Big D. <laughs> but the guy was what? Yeah, it was like four, extra, extra large. You four, went. Four see, you were like, see what this, see what it looks like. <laughs> it was, I, like, it was like. A I put it on you. <laughs> you could have, you could have camped in me. Yeah, his mom's night. He was just saying, oh, man, unless your dad's into, I'm not going to judge. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you'll hear it back and you'll get it. It's funny, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, troops. I think that pretty much sums up today's podcast yeah that was sick yeah it was sick it's good hearing about your life and, and that George you know I mean it's good, it's good to hear how people can change coming through you know not knowing where direction they're coming from as a kid and being a bit lost maybe picking up with the wrong crowd and then you know you kind of find your way you know it happens to different people at different times yeah it's amazing it is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Man was Colonel Sanders I think he was like late 50s or late 60s when he discovered KFC yeah there's loads yeah yeah, yeah. that's what that's what I'm mean. Weird version of a KFC. Yeah, you, yeah you're, the you're, weird... like, you're like a much browner, younger version of him, yeah. Of Colonel yeah. Colonel KFC, whatever yeah. he's called. With like a little poo dash. Yeah, yeah. Instead of a beard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, troops, I'll have Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Say thank you, Alex. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> thank you, George. <laughs> See you, George. See you next. Apology.